Today, witness one woman's dramatic panic attack caught on tape. How you can take control. Today on Mel. I'm Mel Robbins, and I'm a life coach who's helped millions of people get the life they deserve. It's about small steps and big breakthroughs. I believe in you. And together, yes! we got this. people through my books, my TEDx talk, and online courses who are stuck in their lives, just like I used to be. You know, I wasn't always in a good place. For almost 20 years, I struggled with anxiety and debilitating panic attacks. And that's why today's show and this quote hits home for me. You are stronger than your anxiety. So I have a question. What are you anxious about right now? Could it be the bills you're struggling to pay? Maybe you're worried about someone you love, or maybe you just never feel good enough. It's so important to get a hold of your anxiety because if you don't, it can turn into panic attacks, and I don't want that to happen to you. Your heart is racing, pounding inside your chest. You can't seem to concentrate, and you start to break out into a cold sweat, and you're unable to catch your breath. Your body, it feels like it's in a downward spiral and it can last for minutes, hours, even days. Every year, an estimated 40 million adults in the United States suffer from an anxiety disorder. It's the most common form of mental illness. Those who suffer may look fine on the outside, but on the inside, they may struggle just to make it through the day or accomplish the simplest of tasks. Do you know the anxiety warning signs? Now, we're joined today by Dr. Jen Cottle, who is a board-certified family doctor. Yep. And she treats patients in her practice who are struggling with panic attacks and anxiety. I do. So I thank do. you for being here, Dr. Jen. Of course. It's exciting to be here. And such an amazing topic. I'm so glad we're talking about this. I am, too. Yeah. I want to start by having you describe what a panic attack is. Yeah, so, and as you said, a, a lot of my patients in my practice have this. It's very common. A panic attack is a sudden episode of intense fear. But that fear is accompanied by physical symptoms. Like we might get our heart racing, we might get clammy, sweaty, feel like we're actually dying in some cases because we feel so overwhelmed. The thing about it is that even though we have this huge intense fear, there's actually little or no real danger. And that's a panic attack. It can happen anywhere, anytime. Uh, to who can get them? Anyone can get panic attacks. There are some people who we think are at higher risk, right? Those are people who have certain genetic predispositions or maybe a family history of certain conditions. Or maybe if we're someone who's had certain life events or gone through certain traumas, we may be at a higher risk. But the truth of the matter is anyone can get them. Gotcha. At any age, too. At right? any age, right. They can they happen in teen... I've, I've had patients who have them as teenagers to middle-aged adults to even older folks as well. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, having suffered from them and yeah. having dealt with anxiety for so long, I started to think about it this way, that there's a connection between the habit of worrying mm. and anxiety and panic. And yeah. so let me describe this to you and get okay. your reaction. Okay. So we all worry, right? That's right. the negative thoughts in your head. Mm -hmm. And so I think about worry like the little baby of negativity. <laughs> okay. And then anxiety is when that negative worry starts to agitate your body. Mm. And so you start to get the upset stomach or the racing heart. And so that's like the big sister of negativity. Okay. And then I think about panic is when the negative worries and the agitation in your body gets so bad that your body actually thinks it's an emergency, mm. and that's what I call the mother load. The mother <laughs> right. So <laughs> the mother is that load. is that a fair kind of assessment for certain types of panic you attacks? Know, I love in some ways the way you described it because you're talking about a continuum, which that is what we see when we think of anxiety, panic attacks, panic disorder, even phobias. That's sort of a continuum, a spectrum. Um, they're all different, don't get me wrong, but they kind of live along in the same neighborhood. Let's put it that way. Gotcha. Yeah. So what 
typically causes or triggers yeah. a panic attack? You know, I wish we knew. Interestingly enough. I don't like that answer. I know. I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> I know. I mean, honestly, as a doctor, I don't like that answer either. I'm with you on that, but we don't exactly know the causes. Again, some of the things I mentioned that may predispose us to having panic attacks uh, still exist in this situation, but the exact sort of cause, we don't exactly know. And as I mentioned before, they can happen any place, any time, to most anyone. Now, I remember the first panic attack I ever had. Yeah. And it's embarrassing to admit this, but it was the first day of law school. Mm. And I started to have a panic attack. Mm. And it was so bad, I actually packed up my apartment. I unenrolled from school and drove away. God bless you. It was terrifying. Yeah, it is terrifying. And why are they so terrifying? Can you describe this <sighs> yeah. to people? Because it's hard to describe. And since you revealed that, I'm just going to say very briefly that <laughs> I, I've had panic attacks too. And it was my first job out of residency. I remember being in the hospital lobby, getting ready to round on patients and just waiting to go up the elevator. I was having a panic attack. So this is common to me too. And I know what you're talking about. The thing about why they're so hard and why we fear them is because first of all, you feel like you're dying, right? You've got the, the sweaty palms. You feel overcome. You maybe you're short of breath. You chest pains. You feel like everything's tightening up, or you might even have this out of body experience. And what can start to happen if we get panic attacks enough is that we actually start to fear the fear. We start being afraid of having panic attacks, of being afraid. And that, along with possibly changing our environment and changing what we do in our regular everyday life over time, can lead to panic disorder. Wow. So, I'm starting know, to feel panicky just talking oh, no. about this stuff. <laughs> That's not what I want. <laughs> I know, I know. That's really it's not important what I want. to talk about. I'm just saying that, <laughs> yes. like, you know, having lived it, yes. it's right there. It's tough, right? Yes. And it almost doesn't it kind of bring back, like, you remember exactly where you were, exactly how you felt. Completely. Exactly, right. It's like, it's almost like, not, you're, not that you're going back there, but you'll never forget that feeling. Never forget it. That's and guess right. what? Monica's never going to forget it. She knows exactly what a panic attack feels like because she had her first one when she was 16 years old. My name is Monica, and I'm 23 years old. I had my first panic attack in a public speaking class when I was in high school. I was sitting in class, and I started zoning out, and I got lost in my own daydream. When I came to, I freaked out, and it was because I couldn't tell the difference between my daydream and reality. I had this intense urge to just get out of there. I started sweating and I thought I was going crazy. Nothing felt real. I literally thought I was having a heart attack at 16. Monica, thank you for being here. You just said that it freaked you out. Yes. When it, you had that first one, can you describe what happened? It was like nothing I've ever experienced before in my entire life. It was basically like I was just zoning out. I was just having a daydream, whatever. And then all of a sudden, ironically, in my public speaking class. I'm not even afraid of public speaking. And it was just like something, like a whole wave of just panic, terror. It was like my heart started beating. I started sweating. I didn't know the difference between the reality and, you know, what I was daydreaming about. It was the most terrifying thing I've ever experienced. And how long did it last? It lasted about five to 10 seconds. I've had ones bad to about 10 seconds. But usually they last about five minutes or five seconds. And, and you said you thought you were having a heart attack. Yes, I thought I was going to die, and I thought I needed to be put up in, like, a mental institution. Now, Dr. Jen, it's yeah. pretty normal to have that. I've heard a lot of people say, mm -hmm. I felt like I was going to die or have right. a heart attack, right? That's right. That's a very common sort of feeling, a feeling of almost impending doom. And you're right, they can last for minutes. Sometimes they last longer for people, but that's not an uncommon feeling. Right. You know, I came up with this way of thinking about panic attacks that helped me a lot. And so, have you ever had an experience where you've been in the car and a car comes out of nowhere and almost hits you, right? And the second that it happens, you have this wave of adrenaline that happens and your heart races and your throat gets tight, but then all of a sudden that feeling disappears, right? That's exactly what a panic attack feels like. But here's the difference. In normal life, if you're driving the car and the car almost hits you, your brain has a reason to describe why your body just did that. So the second the car's gone, the danger's gone and your body settles. When I had a panic attack, I'd be standing in front of the microwave, you know, making a cup of coffee, and that same <gasps> feeling came over me. Right. But my brain didn't have a reason why, so I would immediately be like, oh my God, I must be dying. <gasps> Right. Yep. Is that you couldn't have explained it any better? I thank you. Yeah, you know that was <laughs> yeah. that was that was spot on. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it's, 
It's the fight or flight response. It's the difference between a real threat and a threat that's actually not real. Gotcha. Anxiety is not a bad thing because in situations where we're in the car about to be hit, anxiety is what helps us swerve out of the way. Oh, that's if a good a, point. Right. If a bear walked into the studio, we'd all say, like, ah, and that would be appropriate because it's a bear. But, the, <laughs> but the, and we need to run, right? But the problem is when we feel that way, right, there's no bear over there. <laughs> I don't see a bear. But the problem is when we feel that way, like, and there's no bear or there's no car about to hit us. That's what's happening in panic attacks because we feel fear, but the danger is not actually there. Gotcha. Well, can you describe the worst panic attack you've ever had? Like where you were, what triggered it? I was actually in my living room. Um, I just got home from the mall with my girlfriend and I got a text from my boyfriend saying that he was going to break up with me and mm. it was uh, over a year and we were best friends for four years and I never get too worked up over boys. I, that's just not me. And the fact that this happened, I was like, well, now everything's ending. I couldn't breathe. And that was the first time that I've had a panic attack so bad that I couldn't breathe. And I was like, no, 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 no. I just kept saying out loud, no, no, no. I didn't know what was happening. I, I thought I was going to pass out because... Were you saying no, 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 because you couldn't breathe or because of the text or because the, the, the you were scared of the panic? I was scared of the panic. What's the difference between normal panic mm -hmm. and having a panic attack? Yeah, so, you know, sometimes we use the phrase like anxiety attack. Um, and I would say that that's different than a panic attack. Anxiety What's attacks, the difference between an anxiety attack and a okay, panic attack? Okay, so what the difference is that in an anxiety attack, usually the person maybe has some underlying level, maybe have a little bit of anxiety, maybe not. But the idea is that life has just gotten kind of in the way. It's kind of like when you got to pick up your kids, you got to make dinner, you got five different things to do, you got to make cupcakes for class. You mean every day? Every, yeah. right, right, every day. But the idea is when you feel overwhelmed to a point of, uh, you know, anxious and that's more of an anxiety attack versus a panic attack is number one it's not gradual like an anxiety attack can be because oh. anxiety attacks sort of build as things build you're like oh my gosh I'm, I'm reaching my end and panic attacks as you mentioned they just come out of the blue bam you're in it you're like whoa what just happened to me they're unpredictable they come out of the blue they're usually short-lived they come they last for minutes they can last for hours for some people but minutes sometimes is all it takes and when they leave they leave almost like they you got punched in the face you're exhausted. You've just been spent. You, you, you really need to rest and recover from them. And again, one of the biggest things is that the threat is not as dangerous. It's not dangerous, even though we feel that it is. Gotcha. Those wow. are some of the main differences. Uh, thank you for that. Up next, this woman's panic attacks are so bad, she can't even cross the street by herself. And with Dr. Jen and I standing by, you are about to witness how truly terrifying a panic attack can be. We'll be right back. Up next. So you're holding your, your chest here. Is your heart beating? Yeah. I feel like I'm having a heart attack. We're going to be across the street waiting for you. Ah! Let's just do it. Come on. Welcome back. I'm Mel Robbins. Panic disorders affect 6 million people. Now, my panic attack started in my early 20s, actually the day I started law school, that was probably a sign, right? They can happen for two reasons, because you have something scary to do, or in my case, for almost no reason at all. Now Donna says her panic attacks are so bad, she can't even cross the street by herself. And so Donna, I really appreciate you being here, and um, you're 60 years old, and I understand that the last time you crossed a street by yourself was in 1996. Yes. How did this all start? I went to cross the street. I thought I was in the middle. I, I went to cross. I ended up coming back. I'm like, I thought I was in the Twilight Zone. I know I went where I was going, yep. but when I was coming back home, I couldn't cross the street. I'm like, well, that's, that's weird. So I had to call somebody, like meet me, and they met me, and then I'm like, okay. So did you not even re kind of remember what happened? No, because I go out all the time. I walk, like, uh, where I live, you know, yeah. I walk all the time. So I'm like, cross the street. Like, what's the matter? Like, what's the matter, you've been right? You the street like that. Wait a minute, you've been crossing the street forever. So why do you, how come you're not crossing now? But I just not couldn't, mm -mm, I was like. <laughs> so, no. so what do you think you're afraid of? The cars, the street. <laughs> All of it. Yeah, both. Everything gotcha. combined. Yeah. But nothing happened. I mean, you went, but I mean, I just want to clarify that in 1996, 
when you were crossing that street and this first panic attack happened, it wasn't like you got hit by a car. You all of a sudden just felt like something was wrong but, and turned around, but right? Earl, when I was younger, someone was chasing me and they got hit by a car. But oh. I don't think it, I don't I didn't think that would have anything to do with me crossing though, but I'm like Who knows? I don't know. This is just what happened <laughs> yeah. to you. Gotcha. What happens if you try to cross the street now? I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. My breath, I mean, I'm out of breath. I um, feel dizzy. Um, I then go back in the house. So and, you don't do it on your own? No, I have to have, to have somebody go with me. Or I, I just, if I see somebody crossing, I can cross. I cross with them. If three people are crossing, I'm in the middle. If you say cross by yourself, no way. Uh, no, I'm going back in the house. Okay. <laughs> now, what does it feel like for you when you start to have a panic attack? I feel like I'm dizzy and my heart hurt, is racing. I feel like I'm having a heart attack. I'm out of breath. I'm crying. Sometimes I'm crying because I'm like, I know, like when I leave out, okay, like some days, if I know I'm going out Monday, yes, I have to plan next month, the Monday before, to get out. So I'm calling people up. Can you come with me such and such? Can you go with me such and such? Or I take the bus and go all the way around. Just to get across the street. Get across the street. Wow, Donna. So I want to thank I you. I might take three buses just to go around the corner. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of planning. Yeah. And that's a lot of extra time. Yeah, and then some days I'm like, no mind, I'm not even gonna go outside. Well, just that's like... <laughs> a shame and I want to do something about that. And I also want to thank you for something. Because Donna is going to show you exactly what she goes through. With Dr. Cottle to supervise, Donna agreed to try to cross the street by herself. Let's take a look at what happened. Okay, we're going to walk down to this corner, Donna. You got this. So you're holding your, your chest here. Is your heart beating? Yeah. I feel like I'm having a heart attack. All right. Okay. Understand. We're going to go over there. We're going to leave you here, and we're going to be across the street waiting for you. Ah! We're going to try it today, okay? okay. And see what happens. Okay. okay. Oh, oh, she's going. Do it. You got this! Okay, so what happened right there when you put your hand to your chest? My chest was hurting. It was just hurting, and like just tight, hurting. Okay. You took at least one or two steps, yeah. and then the panic started. And when we come back, Donna has a full-blown panic attack. And I'm also going to tell you what a therapist told our family to do when my son had such severe panic attacks, he wouldn't go into an elevator, into a tall building, or into any city. We'll be right back. Next. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. What's happening? It's okay. It's What's okay. happening? It's okay. What's happening? Yeah. Look at Mel Robbins. Look at me, honey. Okay. So what happened as you stepped on the street? <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Mel Robbins. Donna has suffered from debilitating panic attacks for over 20 years. She wanted me to see how bad it gets when she tries to cross the street here in New York City. Take a look at what happened and why Dr. Jen and I stepped in to help. Panic attack mode, here we go. Look, she's turning around, she's turning around, she's turning around. Oh, okay, she just had a panic attack. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's happening. Look at me. Look at Mel Robbins. Look at Mel Robbins. Look at me, honey. So what happened as you stepped on the street? I just felt nervous. I thought I could do it, but uh, <laughs> it's easier said than done. I couldn't. What if we try to cross the street together? Okay, you ready? Yeah. All right. You want to okay. hold hands? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. And so you said you like to be in the middle? Yeah. Yes. You I'm like to cross with somebody. Right, I can cross with Look somebody. Okay, yeah. Holding hands? I'm okay, yeah, I'm you. okay if I'm crossing yeah, with somebody. Yeah, Okay. Hey, hey, but you can, you're doing it. You're doing it. Okay, because y'all was in the middle. Y'all were all right. That was excellent. Yeah, was... Well, why don't we try it again? Because we're not going to hold your hand. Here we go. Okay? We're with you, but we're going to go a little ahead of you, okay? She's catching up. I know. She's welcome back. You're doing great. 
Look at you. Yep. We're not even with you. You're doing excellent. Look at you. You're basically by yourself. Look at you. You got this. Okay. You got this. Yes. Are you proud of yourself? Yeah. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Does that give you a little bit of hope yeah. that maybe we can, with a little bit of time, get you're you gonna there. give the advice, Absolutely. but so we get, you know, we're gonna get you there. I'm oh, proud okay. Of you. okay. Thank you. you. Thank you. So Donna, what's your reaction when you see yourself? Did you have any anxiety at all watching yourself have a panic attack? No, but y'all was in the middle, so I was okay. Gotcha. Like, I, I'm all right. And then when I was crossing, I wasn't even focusing on the cars. I was focusing on the sidewalk because it's one, them little things. And I was like, okay, one, two, and then I end up on the sidewalk. Gotcha, taking one step at a yeah. time. Well, one of the things that I also noticed when we were watching that tape, Dr. Jen, is your smile was huge. Yeah. And so I'm hoping it's because yeah. there are baby steps that people can take, even yeah. if it's a severe situation like what Donna's dealing with. Yes, and I think that's one of the most important messages here is that there is hope. That's that's the one thing I want to say to you and to so many people out there. Um, and I would also say, just as looking at, back at this tape, we're talking about panic attacks, panic disorder, but I would say this even ventures possibly into phobia, which is a severe irrational fear of a certain situation, a thing, a spider, a heights, a bridge, etc. That's kind of what we're looking at here, that it affects one's life to the point where we arrange, rearrange our lives. Like you take yeah. multiple buses, right. you adjust your life for it. And interestingly enough, you mentioned that you had had a situation when you were younger where someone I think was hit by a car, is that correct? Right. We don't always know the cause of phobias, right. but sometimes traumatic experiences when we're younger, um, things like that can play a role. So, but going back to the smile that I had on my face is there is hope. And that's what I want people to know. I, <laughs> yeah. There really is. And, you know, I feel like a little kid and sometimes. That's what I was about so. to say because you said that to us outside. Remember when she, she said, 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 I feel she like said, a baby. She said, I feel, well, she, she got to the other side of the road and she says, I feel like a baby. And that's the thing is a lot of times people feel helpless. Right. Feel like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? I feel like a child. But you're not. This is a medical condition and there is help. Well, let's talk about the hope and the good news yeah. and the steps that people can yeah. take because what we saw is a progression. Mm -hmm. We saw you not be able to do it. Then we saw you be able to do it with our help, right. holding our hands. Then we saw you be able to do it walking behind us, mm -hmm. which means you can make gradual steps. I want to tell you a, a quick story about sure. something that worked for us. Yes. So in 2013, when there was the Boston Marathon bombings, uh, I don't know if it was the media coverage, but all of a sudden our son, who was eight years old, started to have debilitating panic attacks. He wouldn't get in an elevator. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't go into a tall building. He would not drive into Boston yeah. where we live. We live in a suburban area, but he wouldn't sure. go into the city. Sure. And we were flummoxed. Like, we didn't know what the heck to do. Yeah. And yeah. for me, it was very triggering because I had struggled with it in, in my past. So we went to this therapist, and she basically said, you have to socialize yourself to the situation you're scared of. Mm -hmm. So we had to, A, pick something that was worth putting yourself through the effort. Mm -hmm. So for Oakley, it was a big thing. He wanted an Xbox. So okay. he was going to have to do, <laughs> right. he was going to have to get into an elevator on five different occasions. So he was going to have to work up to it. Uh -huh. And we started with the hand holding. We started with standing and not being near him. Then we had him just go in one. Mm -hmm. And slowly over time, it wasn't easy. Right. But slowly over time, by exposing himself to it and showing himself that he could be in these situations and survive it, the panic disappeared. Mm -hmm. Is that the steps that people need to take? That's a real thing. And I think what you're kind of describing is a little bit of what we call exposure therapy. Um, you know, one of the, the ways that there's many different ways to, to deal with phobias and panic attacks, et cetera. Therapy is a really important part of this. And a component of therapy can be exposure therapy. That's this idea of reacclimating ourselves to the thing that we're afraid of. And therapists can help guide us through that. There are also medications for the right person, but there's a combination of stuff that we can use. And yes, you're right, exposure therapy works very, very well for many people who have phobia. But with supervision. With supervision, <laughs> under doctor's care, yes. absolutely. And like getting, you know, like having the recipe that was built for you, because everybody's so different, you know? But good for you that you're, yeah. you're trying. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Yes, that is the most important thing. 
And so, Donna, I'm proud of you. I want to thank you. Is there a reward? Is there something that you really want to do that would make it worth talking oh, I like to, to Dr. I like to travel, so I just want to one day travel by myself. Where? The, like Baltimore to Baltimore. the harbor or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just so there's be able your to reward. Cross, and just be able to cross without mm -hmm. having to hop in cabs every time I get ready to go out. <laughs> Terrific. Well, I hope that you get the help that you need. Mm -hmm. I hope that you get the exposure therapy and some professional. You're going to talk to Jen yeah. backstage. Okay. And when you go to Baltimore, <laughs> I would like to see a photo. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Perfect.